Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Today's focus is on the introduction of the Mercedes-Benz Mitsubishi Fuso electric truck in their New York City debut. Bonjour, the Gates for Station of Kimmel's by Binance Das, VJ Nihao Ma. I'd like to cover five points today on this vehicle debut. As we shared with you in yesterday's post, production has just begun a month and a half ago in the Portugal factory for this vehicle. The reason why we're Tesla Fan Insight in doing this is because Mercedes-Benz doesn't make battery packs at this level. And the supercharger ability of the pack makes it clear that this is actually a Tesla pack that's being used. But frankly, Mercedes-Benz isn't revealing any of the suppliers for any components of this vehicle. So this shouldn't be a real shocker. The uh, five points I'd like to cover focus on number one, who the partner is. Number two, we've covered the battery pack. Number three, um, there's a mystery question, which is what happened to the other, let's say, 100 units of the vehicle that were in test around the, the world. Number four, um, the next issue is um, kind of how come Tesla's not around and what are they up to because Elon Musk just announced today in a tweet that October 26th would be the day of the reveal for the actual semi-truck product that they have available. So the first item I'd like to cover today is just reviewing the fact that we kind of predicted what was going to happen here, namely the delivery of the uh, of, of the brand new vehicle. Um, during the discussion, they covered the fact that Japan 7-Eleven has 25 copies of this vehicle that they've ordered and taking delivery on soon by the end of the year or beginning of next year, possibly. It was also announced yesterday, as we discussed, that they have a supercharger facility to recharge those vehicles quickly, um, which I think it makes it clear that it's not a packet and that Mercedes and their partnership with Tesla allows them to do supercharger on the Tesla battery pack inside of these vehicles. Um, the next thing I wanted to cover is the partner chosen. As predicted, Mercedes has chosen one of the largest and best fleet partners in the United States, and that is the folks at, at UPS. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, UPS actually owns their vehicles, whereas uh, FedEx actually will lease the ground fleet while owning the air fleet. So it could be argued that uh, UPS is probably the best partner in the United States because they have the largest fleet of trucks of any size from very small to very large and driven by the fact that they're moving they're the largest package uh, mover in the country not a big shock um, i think for ups this is actually good news because i think it could help their stock because as these vehicles are being delivered um, UPS has the facilities to take delivery on thousands of these vehicles if and when they're available, whereas competitors will be frozen out from having access to this new inventory of vehicles. The next thing I'd like to cover is the fact that, um, as we know, we covered the general specs several times already. Uh, the vehicle is capable of about 60 or 65 miles, 100 kilometers um, in the base setting, but it can um, be set up for 170 kilometers or 120 miles or so um, if the customer wants a longer run. Uh, as you know, with electric it's zero emissions, um, you know, the reason why I think this, this company and the growth of taking deliveries of these will really help the stock price of UPS is according to the largest or the only customer revealing the performance specs on the vehicle has been Japan 7-Eleven. And what they've informed us is that they're showing a 40% reduction in costs when they use an electric vehicle. 
So if UPS is able to swap out a large number of vehicles over the next few years with that kind of cost savings, not only do they reduce the amount of pollution that they're putting up in the air of big cities like New York, but they also have the potential to um, lower their overall costs and therefore increase profits if they choose to. Interestingly, Japan 7-Eleven has chosen to um, use the proceeds from their cost reduction to address uh, driver compensation because they have a hard time finding people and in a place where it's hard to find workers having that uh, driver compensation increase that they can do without increasing prices you know, is a big boost to their company. The next issue I wanted to cover on this is um, kind of what next in process. I think Mercedes is being cagey about what they're doing uh, when it comes to battery technology, but let's say they're kind of being smart because right now they're developing their own ability with batteries by building their own factories so they can swap out from using Tesla cells into their own cells or even cells uh, produced by one of their Korean partners, and it'll be a seamless execution. There's a, a behind the scenes question mark here in my mind, which is what happened to the 125 vehicles? So we know 25 of them went to Japan 7-Eleven for a test facility. So over the last year, Mercedes-Benz put out 150 of these vehicles around the world. The U.S. partner now clear is, is probably UPS, and there may be another U.S. partner we don't know about. The German partner, at least one of them was Elmaze, and we don't know who the other uh, partners there are, but in Japan we know who's there. So there seems to be a number of around the world large customers that have taken delivery on test quantities of this vehicle and have been running it but because it doesn't have any badging difference than a diesel vehicle, if you didn't know what you're looking at, you might be sitting next to an electric, you know, Tesla powered truck and didn't realize it. So now that the news is starting to float out, uh, it'll be interesting to sort of see what spy shots show up, etc. The next thing I'd like to cover is sort of how and why Mercedes chose to introduce in this fashion. There's a truck conference going on right now, which is where Mercedes usually introduces new truck products. CEO of Mercedes is current, uh, sort of did a joint announcement of this vehicle from Germany to New York. Um, another interesting footnote about this introduction is the fact that not only did Mercedes provide vehicles or is providing vehicles to U.S. Uh, United Parcel Service, but they've also picked four nonprofits uh, that deliver to needy folks in the greater New York area that they've allocated a vehicle to as well. Uh, I think that both the UPS as well as these customers, the vehicles can sit overnight uh, for a plug-in charge they did not announce a supercharger facility or access to go with these vehicles in the New York area, um, as was the case with Japan 7-Eleven and the charging stations that they highlighted <clears throat> there. But, um, you know, I don't think these are 24-7 type of customers or situations. So I think that it works fine for them not to have supercharger capabilities. As we all know with Tesla and our check-in on a supercharger for this. UPS, as long as they have a certain number of vehicles, and I think in the case of Tesla, it's six vehicles required before they give you a Tesla-funded supercharger. All they need to do is have at least 10 vehicles and the supercharger installation pays for itself. So I believe uh, UPS possibly has their own supercharger because of this. But I don't know if they need it because if it's a daytime delivery situation and then go home, I think they're fine. I, I believe that um, they're fine, particularly in warm months. But as we all know, New York actually gets into the freezing zone probably two to three months a year. 
and even on a low battery, if we're not frozen or below freezing, we're in a low cold zone at least another two or three months every year. So I believe that they're going to need a supercharger if they don't have one because that charge will be, or the, the distance the vehicles travel will be affected by uh, above or below freezing and how the battery has to uh, massage itself uh, temperature wise to get to a decent operating state. So I'm really fascinated by sort of everything going on here because the um, process of this rollout is, I want to say, a little bit unexpected. What I was actually expecting is that Tesla, after they announced they're going to make their announcement in September, uh, and Mercedes said they would make their truck announcement this September, I thought the two of them would make a joint announcement, and obviously that did not occur. Um, I therefore am also fascinated because Elon Musk and company announced that October 26th would be the introduction date of the semi-product. Um, I'm intrigued by this because, you know, Elon Musk is just talking about showing off a vehicle in Hawthorne, California at SpaceX. That's the same vehicle that he's been driving since May. So a new term that I've learned is something called the nothing burger based on the Trump investigations. And what I'm fascinated by is, if you think about it, when the Model 3 came out, uh, they announced the vehicles, they showed pictures of it, but none of the raw specs or introduction to the battery pack and all these interesting questions were answered. So once we get into that October 26th announcement for um, the semi-product from Tesla, we might find out who the scale or large scale partners that have unlimited orders might be, but my ex expectation is a similar, show you a product, show you that it works, but you gotta get a feeling like um, you saw something, but there's a whole bunch of questions you'd love to ask that they aren't gonna answer uh, that go with it. And it's clear that they won't answer because of competitive reasons and, you know, the number of entities that are sort of coming after them and the fact that they want to be cagey about it. So I think it's great that we now have an electric truck product that's ready to roll. It's been on the road for um, over a year in the hands of uh, fleet customers. Those customers are happy with performance as is. Those customers also have the potential going forward in two years to switch from the 81650 battery to the 2170, which will give them more range and a lighter weight so they can carry more cargo. So I think it's great that this vehicle has come out and Mercedes is confident enough to put it in the hands of customers uh, to make it work. I would say that the only bad news that's emerged from this is the fact that I think that there are some, you know, at the initial stage, the number of vehicles coming out will be low based on the dearth of battery packs. As we get into year two, I would say that I'm a little concerned for competitors because as the number of electric vehicles hitting those inner city locations increases, the amount of savings is gonna start hitting the bottom line of UPS and can allow them to gain a cost advantage on large competitors like FedEx. So it'll be interesting to see how that, what, how and what the response is. I know FedEx has some electric product tests that they've been doing with other manufacturers, and it'll be interesting to see how all this comes together. So bottom line is that I think it's great we now have trucks. I think the inner city locations could really use the reduction in pollution. Uh, I, I'm excited to see sort of what the future brings in terms of getting these out at scale because it'll help the environment um, because diesel does pollute a lot and um, those companies will save a lot of money and reduce production uh, pollution at the same time look forward to your comments and input this is greg for tesla fan insight um, please like and subscribe and you can also use your support on patreon have a great day thanks
and we'll look forward to our next conversation.